Sixty-four-year-old veteran hawker Mr. Sirajuddin runs a traditional Muslim food hawker business in Baduk South. He wakes up at 2 a.m. every day to prepare ingredients and does not leave the stall till sundown. It's very tough. Very tough to make money. You must be prepared mentally and physically. If you can, don't do this. <laughs> huh? It's not profitable. <laughs> it's a hard work. I don't think young men will like to do. <laughs> Mr. Sirajuddin represents the average Singaporean hawker, where the average age is 59 years old. However, there is a breed of millennials who still choose to venture into the industry despite the older generation's discouragement. 24-year-old Charlene Ong is a biomedical science graduate from the University of Queensland in Australia. Her expertise lies in scientific research and conducting endless experiments in the comfort of a sterilized lab. So it's no wonder that she left everyone baffled in 2018 when she traded that prestigious occupation for a life of a hot and sweaty hawker. My passion was still in science, so it's still good that I actually managed to pursue biomedical science and I realised that she got like both, like the best of both worlds. Yeah. Okay, I think this is more challenging than I actually go to like a lab to work as research and stuff like that. On top of that, Charlene often received unkind comments from older hawkers and customers. Many of them believe that millennials like Charlene are unable to deal with hardship the way their generation did. They believe that uh, youngsters should go on and further their studies, work in corporate jobs and stuff like that. So sometimes they can be a bit demeaning, but it's okay. La. Uh, they will go like, oh, uh, why don't I go and study? Like, um, yeah, studying is good and stuff like that. Oh, don't work here. Yeah. Despite her science background and daily prejudice, her drive to kickstart her hawker career had a lot to do with her father and maintaining his legacy of keeping traditional like hawker food alive. Um. Father used to run like, Simpang last month, 30 years ago, so probably that's what actually like, like, sparked his interest. So that's how I just, just took over and then, yeah. Mm, we won't move to Fusion, but we will have like uh, maybe new food coming up, maybe like a different kind of cuisine, um, yeah. In comparison, 33-year-old Naomi Ngu is also a millennial hawker. But she is trying to reinvent the scene by selling a fusion of Korean, Italian, Japanese and Chinese food. If you look at hawker center food, right, it started out with um, a creation of their own. And then it became popular. And so I, I was thinking like, um, do I want to come up, do I want to do, sell common food, uh, I think it will be better for me to create my own brand and a food that uh, I would be happy to serve and eat. New Age food in an old age industry. Naomi selling fusion food in Old Airport Road Hawker Centre may seem like a mismatch to some. So Naomi has to work doubly hard to prove herself. You face your customers. What is this food? I never even see before. Nice not. Wow, sell so, so, so cheap. Ah. Confirm not nice. Yeah, like, huh? Sell so cheap. We also see like that. Ah. Okay, okay, I sell more expensive. The small space that hawkers like Charlene and Naomi are confined to means that not many people are able to be in that space at one time. The environment is small. It's you and your partner working for 12 hours a day, every day, whether you are sick or not, you have to still, you know, pull on. It takes a lot of uh, perseverance. The other part will be really the, the, un, the, the limited source of uh, help available in terms of, like, um, people willing to uh, work and you, you, you sort of cannot hire people 
Long hours, no off days, no life on weekends or public holidays. That is yet another reason why the hawker trade is shunned by many. Lionel Hoare, a 30-year-old hawker, knows that all too well. I'm spending way more hours. Like last time, okay, for example, I work graveyard hours. I do work like maybe 45 hours a week. Here, I'm working like 72 hours a week. Lionel has been running a sourdough pizza and bread stall at Budok Marketplace since 2017. He can't remember the last time he celebrated Christmas or Chinese New Year with his family. You have to be very, very sacrificial. Uh. Like, family time. What is Christmas? I can't remember where the last time I celebrated Christmas. What is Valentine's Day? What is birthday? Yeah. What is New Year's countdown? No, uh, you don't. Uh. You work. Uh. You suck it up, uh, you go to work. Uh. Not being able to spend time with his loved ones while watching people do it has slowly left a negative impact on his social life. You do get depressed, la, but the thing is, because I already told myself, like, this is going to happen, so it didn't strike me that hard. Like, it's a waste of my time, like, why am I doing this? For sure, you ask yourself, why am I doing this? Here, I'm slogging my ass out, but I'm only earning, like, 1 grand, 1.5. It's, yeah, you just okay, suck it up, la. you chose to do this. La. Yeah, that, I would say that's one of the biggest struggles, to kind of keep convincing yourself, at the end of the day, this is what you're making. You know? Despite all the struggles that these millennial hawkers have been through, all of them have learned a valuable lesson that every aspiring young hawker should keep in mind. Um, basically, I feel like uh, you have to really find joy in the things you do. Uh, even like sometimes it's a bit hard, but I like, always believe that like, you know, the fruits of labour will, like, will come after. Uh. You, you need to convince yourself. Uh. It's really about <sighs> convincing yourself that this is what I want to do. Uh. This is really, really what I want to do. If you want to appreciate uh, what our previous generation have uh, to make part of Singapore culture, I would think that you should, you should uh, come in as a hawker. Don't look at all the circumstances around you or whatever that people try to say to you that discourages you, but just think of knowing where your dream is la, and just continue to dream your dream and fight for what you believe in. Hawker culture in Singapore is an integral part of the country's way of life. In 2019, Hawker Heritage was nominated to be part of UNESCO's list of intangible cultural heritage. It is a community where people can mingle over tasty and affordable food prepared by veterans of the trade. But the numbers of entry-level hawkers are still low, while veteran stalls are closing down because no one is willing to continue their legacy. Young hawkers should not be afraid to join the hawker industry, just like these three entrepreneurs, Charlene, Naomi, and Lionel. Because at the end of the day, it is our hawker centers that are the soul of the nation and make Singapore, Singapore. Welcome to Singapore. Singapore loves you.